This one's a, a comparison between two models of how we, we think memory might work. Um, the working memory model, which is the newer version, and uh, the multi-store model. So we'll work with the multi-store model first. This is the idea that you have some kind of um, stimuli or stimulus. Let's have a couple of them, stimuli. Um, and this could be anything, it could be a sound, it could be a smell, it could be a touch, um, it could be something that's seen. This then goes into uh, what we call the sensory memory. And anything that we can sense, anything we can detect, any change in our environment would go into here. So for example, as you're sitting here now, you're taking huge amounts of um, information, sensory information. You're seeing things, you're hearing things. Um, but you're also, you know, you detect the temperature in the room, you're hearing things perhaps that are happening outside the room or in the streets outside. Not all of that information will go into your brain. A lot of it will be lost. Our brain is making a decision um, all the time, sort of running in the background, making a decision for you. Am I likely to need to remember this information or not? And most of it is actually lost and we, we get rid of it. Um, and, and we simply wouldn't remember it. If the brain is making this internal decision that this might be something I need to remember, uh, we then go through uh, a step called processing, and then stop that right. it goes into our short-term memory. I'm just going to put STM, but that's short-term memory. And the idea here is that in our short-term memory, we we do something with it, we um, perhaps if it's something we have to try and remember, we mentally go through the steps, um, you know, if somebody was saying to you, right, can you remember the words to a nursery rhyme, hickory dickory dock, you might repeat it over and over to yourself until you've got it. Um, it might be that you think about it in a certain way to try and help you remember it. Um, however, even then, some of it is lost. If you think back to you know, how many lessons you must have been in at school, uh, you remembered something at the time and then it, it turns out the next day or the next week or months later um, you, you can't remember it at all. The idea being that perhaps we didn't do something here, we, our rehearsal wasn't good enough, something that we, we did didn't help us to remember it. Because what we're aiming to do in this model is to get that information to go into our long term memory. I'm just going to put LTM for that one. Long term memory. Okay, And again this term processing it's a bit of an easy term really because you know, there could be a whole, a whole bunch of things going on here that we're not discussing any that kind of detail so we're just going to say oh, it's processed in some way something happens which means it goes from a short term memory into a long term memory if it goes in here in theory we can then remember it um, this is where we want to get information so that if um, I was to say what date is the, the 25th of December known for? You, well, it's Christmas Day, but you'd be calling on your long-term memory because you, that's something you've remembered over long periods of time, um, which is why it's in there. If I said, um, let's, take, sorry, let's take something for maths, and um, we did something like that, and I said, what does the M stand for in this? You might have to go into your long-term memory and say, well, I remember it's something brackets in this oh it's multiplication you're pulling that information in your long-term memory but it's gone in there because you've used it before or you've rehearsed it or you've revised it in some way now back in the 70s um, a couple of scientists decided that this model was actually uh, not quite the best model maybe there was something not quite right with it and they came up with an improvement the working memory model and it's a very very similar idea except that in this case the short-term memory now becomes something called working memory so let's just um, use this same idea again we've got lots of stimuli coming in it then passes into um, our short-term memory or what we might now call working memory. And the idea with this bit is um, C 
similar to before where we had things going into a long term and of course we can still lose bits of information at every step of this but the suggestion here is that uh, our long term memory and our working memory this is the bit where we do the thinking so if I were to say to you for example um, what is um, 7 times 16 you would go to your long term memory and recall the information about how to multiply numbers together you might remember for example times tables but you would pull all that mem uh, all those memories back into here how to do it uh, what your times tables were you could then maybe work it out and say oh well it's 7 times 10 would be 70 7 sixes 42 so 7 plus 42 that would be 112 so you've drawn that information back out there. Now, if you remember, we talked about short-term memory in the class. This is the thing that's got either, um, it's got a maximum size to it. Um, somewhere between um, seven bits of information, plus or minus two bits of information, can be held in your short-term memory at any one time. Now, with this working memory model, it's the same idea, but what we're saying is you've got a limited amount of space in here that you can actually think about things. So to use the maths example again, if I was to say what's 359 times 468, you're overloading this, this memory bit here. Yes, you'd have to then still pull back the bit about how do I multiply things. You would then have to work out or, or remember your times tables, but you would have to also then remember every single step as you're going. How much is that number? How much is that number? And it would overload it. So the working memory is the bit where you do your thinking. Um, to give you a non-maths example, um, if you were asked to work out a problem, um, you're given some scenario and it says, what might the solution be here? You would be pulling back from your long-term memory, perhaps um, similar questions or similar problems you've come across. The problem is because you've got a limited amount in here, unless you get the correct things in here, then you might not solve the problem because you're working from a, such a limited um, amount of space. This is why on things like longer answer questions that we've talked about, it's a good idea to, to write things down, to brainstorm things before you go into writing these long answer questions down. Because if you just start writing it, you rely on using this working memory, you've got a limited amount of things you can think about. Seven things plus or minus two, so between five and nine things. Once you start writing things down, what you're effectively doing is extending this working memory. So I can't remember what my for maths was before but as soon as I start writing things down I'm no longer having to rely on this limited amount of information which is why writing things down uh, in maths is particularly helpful and so on